Hey guys, welcome to Supercars of London and I'm here with Supercar Experiences and their Aston Martin DBS Volante. And today I've been given special access to get behind the driver's wheel of this incredible car. The Aston Martin DBS has got a huge V12 engine and it is in a stunning dark gray. And as you can see, it's the Volante, the convertible with the fantastic optional extra rims. And I'm really excited to drive this car. The whole idea of driving a few of Supercar Experiences cars is to give you an idea of first impressions of what it is actually like to drive this car. And like I've said on previous videos, I haven't got that much experience of driving cars and I've been able to count all of the cars that I've driven on public roads for more than 10 miles on one hand so to be able to drive this car as um, the first 10 cars that I've ever driven on the public road for a quite a long period of time is a fantastic opportunity and one that I'm going to grasp with both hands and I can't wait to compare it to the Audi R8 and also the Lamborghini LP560 which is a true thoroughbred supercar with a V10 engine however this is more of a super grand tour and it's brilliant for the motorway driving but it's also got an excellent bit of grunt so we're going to have a look around this car show you a few features of it and uh, then get inside and start it up. So sitting in the driver's seat, obviously very awkwardly, we've got the DBS stitched into these fantastic looking and very comfy bucket seats as well. And they say that this is a two plus two, not a four seater, a two plus two, which basically means it's a two seater with um, poor excuses of two seats in the back. And as you can see, they're the two seats and there's the legroom. So it's I remember doing my first supercar with a Nissan GTR and um, those seats were absolutely terrible. The Aston Martin, um, the fact that they're leather and probably quintessentially British uh, makes up for the fact that there's not actually two seats in the back. Inside the Aston Martin DBS, you've got all of the buttons. It's not fully automatic, but you've also got the uh, paddles here if you want to get that sporty feel. You've got park, reverse, the engine start, which is here, neutral and drive. So obviously neutral, which uh, we're actually in park at the moment. So the first impressions of the Aston Martin DBS are it looks brilliant. The V12 rumble that you get from the exhaust system is also fantastic. I'm just going to turn the engine off because it's beeping at me, which um, is quite normal for these sorts of cars to give you all of the warning singles, signals and things like that. But going back to the first impressions, it feels really comfortable inside. It's not as spacious as I was expecting, but it is very luxurious. We've got Bang & Olufsen, uh, we've got a huge amount of leather and carbon, which is similar to my Audi R8, and we've got lots and lots of black piano all down the centre console, but it just um, screams luxury. And down here you can see the uh, Bang & Olufsen. There we go. Have to zoom in for a while. So, um, should we take this for a drive? I'm quite nervous, really nervous. So the gates are open and we are off in the V12 Aston Martin DBS. And as soon as you take your foot off the brake pedal, it's the automatic gearbox that gets you moving. So there's no biting point or anything like there is in the Audi R8, which I had to deal with, installed on the first time that I ever drove it. And the one problem that I had when I was buying the Audi R8 was I wasn't allowed to test drive it before because I was too young so it's fantastic to be able to be get given this special access to drive the Aston Martin DBS and this is the first car that I'm driving today the Lamborghini's next so what I have to compare against the Aston Martin DBS is one my Audi R8 which is the V8 my 1.4 litre Ford Focus is owned by my mum I don't know why I said mine um, and my old Vauxhall Astra 1.6 as well as my 0 0.9 litre Fiat 500 so um, those engine sizes are this compared to the Aston Martin which is like this I'm quite scared to put my foot down in this car I'm not going to lie as um, it's such a beautiful car and I've seen quite a few in London as well and the DBS does 
really um, please the eye and it also pleases the ears and what I'm really looking forward to is finding out whether it pleases my right foot on the throttle pedal and also on the brakes as well because every supercar that's fast has also got a fantastic braking system. So here we go. So we're in automatic mode, there's no need for the pedals and um, it's so smooth. The suspension, I mean, you don't feel anything like you do in the Audi R8 and um, it definitely feels the price tag that it warrants and um, which is really cool, I'm just soaking it all in so uh, bear with me. Accelerations as well. I'm just going to squeeze my foot on the throttle and let it open up a bit. <laughs> and you get the exhaust. The, the exhausts are on butterfly valves, which means that at a certain rev limit, the valves will open up and you get that real uh, Aston Martin grunt to it. And uh, as we're coming through um, a bit of an underpass, this is the first underpass I went in my Audi R8. I'll squeeze the throttle again and try and get that V12. So covering the first few miles now in the Aston Martin and one thing that I've really noticed is the throttle pedal feels quite spongy when you're coming off the, uh, the from a zero miles an hour. You have your foot on the brake, you take your foot off the brake and it automatically pushes you forward like any automatic car does. And then when you put your foot on the accelerator, even in my Audi R8 and what I assume is going to be the same as the Lamborghini, even probably more harsh in the Lamborghini, is the way that you get off the mark in this is really soft and really tailored. What I think would be to uh, someone that's in for just a cruise, like now I'm squeezing, 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 nothing, and then you put your foot down even more and it doesn't really um, correspond to what you're putting your foot down and the speed that you're doing in the car which um, is something that I'm not used to and I've only driven um, no the only automatic that I've driven was the 458 and that was around the track so that doesn't count I haven't actually driven an automatic on the road so I knew about the brake pedal and the fact that when you take your foot off the brake and you're in drive it lurches forward and, and is already um, in gear for you I'm probably talking and there's lots of people out there that know so much more information about what I'm talking about but I'm just giving my first impressions on what it's like to drive the Aston Martin DBS Volante. Moving off again, where's the accelerator? Well, there it is. I'm not doing anything crazy because that's not what it's all about. It's all about first impressions and what it is like to drive this car for the first time and um, I might try and put it in to the mode where I'm able to use the paddles which will be quite a lot of fun and something that I'm definitely not used to. So now how you take it out of the automatic mode, I've just had it confirmed, is all you have to do is touch a paddle and it's now in the touch tronic mode. I'm in gear 6, now I'm in gear 5, now I'm in gear 4 and you can feel the, uh, the car lurches forward, it realises it's actually being driven now rather than the Aston Martin when it's in automatic um, I can imagine um, you're 50 years old you're cruising around on the motorway down in the south of France with the roof down and you just want it in automatic and the car almost drives itself whereas now that I've got the touch mode on it actually feels like I'm in control of the car so now we're coming down and you get to hear those revs <laughs> There's probably going to be a lot of people out there that um, say that oh, I haven't driven it properly or I haven't gone sideways and burnt tyres up and things like that, but I'm not an experienced driver and I really don't want to crash something that isn't mine, so I just wanted to get a feel for the car, 
learn what it's like to drive an Aston Martin, a V12 compared to the V8. It's got a lot more power, but it doesn't feel like it delivers the power in the same way that my car does. And I think I'm gonna have a real shock when I get in the Lamborghini and it's gonna be really low slung to the ground. I've been in a lot of Lamborghinis, almost every single Gallardo in the product line. So I know what it's like to be in the passenger side. Um, so to actually drive it is gonna be something completely different and uh, hopefully one that I remember. And maybe it will make up my mind on what car I want to have as my second supercar. So I also feel this is almost like a bit of a uh, test drive. So car number six I've ever driven on the public road is the Aston Martin DBS Volante and it is a fantastic luxury car and I'm lucky enough to be able to get behind the wheel of it for that just a short period of time to be able to portray to you guys what it's like to drive and for those people that are lucky enough to own this car but then if you're over 28 and able to hire from supercar experiences this fantastic opportunity, definitely do it. Try and plan it when the uh, sun's out so that you can be able to get the roof down. It doesn't matter whether it's one degree or 20 degrees, any time of the year, um, it is a brilliant, brilliant car. Tune in tomorrow when I get behind the wheel of this fantastic Lamborghini. Check out a few clips um, of what it's like to drive this car and the full videos coming out tomorrow. Thanks guys, make sure that you subscribe and all the details about supercar experiences are in the description below. And if you follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, you'll also be able to check out all of their pages through all of my posts. So um, cheers guys, thank you for watching and I've just got to make sure I can get it in the garage <laughs> and miss a dog. A dog. <laughs>